I've had a second secret that I've been holding from you guys. And I've done that specifically for this reason. Welcome back to another episode of Broken Mirror, guys. Today is Monday, and I'm still trying to sell a Cadillac. I just had someone look at it. Kinda went okay, we'll see. She wants to come back on Saturday. We'll see if she really comes back. It's a week from now, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, I've been trying to find the next flip, and I've probably looked at like, I don't know, I've definitely looked at probably 20, 30 cars. Finally, one guy has actually gotten back to me, and I'm heading there to check it out right now. If I get this car, it will be the newest car that I've bought yet, but it's not running. So I'm gonna head there right now, kind of see where the car is at, what he actually wants to get for it, and see if we can strike up some type of deal. Let's get at it. So that car was a fail. Uh, it was a 2012 Optima. I thought it needed an engine. The guy played stupid, like he didn't know why the car didn't start. It got there, he told me he had a rod knock. So he was already kind of fishy. And then the car didn't even have any plates on it, so I wouldn't be able to park it in the street and work on it, like I always do. It had two flat tires. It hadn't moved, he couldn't find the key. The spare key was out of mechanics. It was like, just one thing after the other. Sucks, the car only had 90,000 miles. It was worth about eight or nine grand finished, but it was just not worth my headaches. Since then, I've went and looked at a 2012 Nissan Versa. That was okay, but it needed so much work and it needed a transmission, and they're really not worth that much. Even a 2012 with only 100,000 miles, they max out at like five, maybe six grand. It just doesn't make sense to have to replace a transmission and need paint on the hood and needed a door replaced. They already had a bunch of bodywork, I could tell. Had a clean title, barely, <laughs> barely for sure. So I skipped that one, it just wasn't worth the headache of trying to do it and barely make any money on it. Probably need a month worth of work and get like two grand, maybe. So I skipped that, I've been looking at others, trying to get a Range Rover, that guy never got back to me. BMW and the Mini never got back to me. So I am trying. It's just really hard to actually get a hold of people in time fast enough. And one of you guys asked in the last video like how I go about this, kind of show it more detailed. I can't get much more detail. It's really just searching and refreshing. Like literally I'll be online just refreshing every 10 to 15 minutes to see if a new car loads. And sometimes a car can sell in 30 minutes. I sold that Cobalt a while back in 26 minutes. So like if it's a good deal and it might need a little bit of work, there's probably 15 people that want to buy it. And if you're not there within the first 10 minutes, you probably already lost it. Like that's how quick it happens. Even taping this right now, I'm losing an opportunity. I bet I'm losing an opportunity doing this right now, guaranteed. And with all that said, I've had a second secret that I've been holding from you guys. And I've done that specifically for this reason. In case there was ever a time where I had some downtime and I couldn't find a car, I had this as backup for content for you guys to watch. So with all of that said, this is my 2006 Audi A3. I've had this car since I sold the Dodge Grand Caravan. So nearly six months this car sat here. <laughs> I bought it for $700 and it has 143 or 149,000 miles on it. So when some of you were wondering why I never kept the black Audi, as much as I wanted to, especially it being my first rebuilt engine. It's because that one looked much better than this one and it was worth more. Uh, this might actually be worth more if it was perfectly done, but it needs a lot of work. Uh, so one of the reasons why I got this thing so cheap was not only because of the mileage and the way it looks, was also because the guy couldn't get it started. And I kind of did some research before I went up to buy this and it turns out that the keys can lose their chip and they can fall to the bottom of the key and you'll get lucky to get it started every once in a blue moon. But if you just shake the key to the bottom, 
and let the chip fall near the actual like key insert, it started right up. It started up and it stayed running for a while, so much so that the guy said, wait, 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 I've never had it run that long. So he bought it trying to flip it. And luckily for me, he put a brand new battery. Well, it was a brand new battery. I need to charge it now, it's completely dead. Uh, but he put a brand new battery, he put a brand new starter in it, and he bought something else electrical, which I forget what else he got into. But he just started replacing parts instead of diagnosing the actual problem. So this guy was asking 900, but there was no pictures of the interior and he made the front bumper look a lot better than it is. When I got there, I could see that it was way more thrashed than what he was trying to lead on to. So then I offered him 700 bucks. He told me, well, I have a guy coming from Las Vegas, to which I told him, you have a guy coming two, three hours away, actually four hours away, to a car that looks nothing like what you have in the photos. I'll give you 700 right now and not have a really angry guy show up in the next couple hours. And he said, deal. So, so I bought it for 700 bucks. As I mentioned, he wasn't able to get it running normal. I then drove it an hour home. So it really was the chip in the key that was busted. The other reason why I've been hanging onto this one and why I worked on the Ford Explorer first was because that key, I knew most likely just needed a shell and maybe some soldering and I just couldn't find the right part. I had ordered a couple of keys. I'd wasted like a hundred bucks and like these spare extra keys. None of them worked. And then finally I found one. And I'm gonna show you that video in a little bit of me replacing and fixing the key. And we're actually gonna find out together if it even actually works now, but I believe it does. But first, I just kind of wanted to give you a walk around guys. When I got there, this bumper was hanging off way worse. And he kind of didn't even show this whole side of the car. He kind of took a nice photo from like, probably like here where you could barely tell this part was hanging off. Definitely couldn't tell that side. So he was definitely trying to hide a lot and trying to be smart about it. But the left side of the car is pretty clean besides the bumper. Oh, this window is stuck open. I've tried fixing it, but to be fair, I tried to fix it quick and park it and get it out of the way. But now I have that extra motor from the A4, which I'm hoping fits this, and I can just send that thing all the way up. Fingers crossed. But luckily the paint is still pretty good on the car, except for where it's chipped off. So like here I have to paint up and then up here, it's chipped away as well and of course the clear coat here but otherwise it's good in fact i want to give it a clean before this stuff really does kill the entire paint another reason i was able to get it so cheap is because this was either backed into or they hit like one of those white poles but it was completely bashed in so you couldn't even open or close the door because of how bad it was so i actually taped a video of that probably six months ago that i'm going to show you guys right now all right guys so I probably, in fact, I know I have, I've recorded this before I've actually started to work on this car fully. I'm probably gonna be working on one or two other cars before this car, uh, but I needed to fix this uh, just for safety reasons. I picked up this guy and it has this big dent here. And what sucks is it makes the handle not work. So to be able to get in, I have to leave the window open to open the car. So what I'm gonna do quick is I'm gonna bang this uh, dent out just so I can lock this baby up and move on to my other projects. All right, guys, let's get at it. So now that I've shown you how I fixed the front door, now we're going to attempt to fix the key. You're gonna see as I'm taping this that this key is just in crumbles. So I finally got what I believe will fix it. We'll finally have a nice key for the Audi. And then I can finally drive it. So I won't be so scared to mess with this. I haven't wanted to touch it because I was afraid that I got lucky with that key. 
and then it might become a problem later on. In fact, they did. I tried to start it a few more times and I started having an issue. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Let's get at it. Okay, time to test out the new key. Which way is it going? That's locked. Yeah. Now, I doubt this battery is good anymore. Yeah, she's completely dead. So, even though this was a brand new battery, it's gotta be shot. So yeah, I'm gonna end up taking out this battery. I'll probably try to go get it replaced if it's still under warranty. But I totally forgot, guys. I bought this and the mass airflow was unplugged. All this air duct work was just hanging out in the engine bay. I drove it home like this, like no joke. This is, this is how it got here. Because I remember I still need the clamp for this, wherever the hell that went. So I'll probably have to bind one or makeshift one. But basically on these ones, I believe the air filter is in here somewhere. I think it's actually like right in this section somewhere. But my goal for right now is I'm gonna take out the battery probably tonight, start to get it charged or go get it replaced, either or. And then in the next video, I'm gonna try to start cleaning this thing up and at the very least get it started and moved. Uh, I think you saw all of my chemicals back here <laughs> which is from some of the flips i've been working on i've already done a run to the chemical place once but i definitely have to go again it, it's time it's totally backed up so i do want to get this thing running pull it out get probably just a nice rinse off of it probably try to get that back window fixed so basically my goal for this car guys is to become my daily driver I can finally turn the Mustang into a drift car, which has kind of been my goal for getting it the entire time. Uh, at the time, finances were so tight, it needed to be my daily. It still is my daily, but my goal is to turn this into it. I do know this thing needs a rear hub, which is like 35, 45 bucks off of Rock Auto. Um, I don't think it needs too much internally. I will probably do a timing belt just to be safe because I know this thing has barely been maintained, but it runs strong. It does run strong even with the mass airflow unplugged, even with it getting home like this. It's good. Uh, I can probably use a training fluid change. We'll see how bad it is. But I think this thing shifted pretty good even with the fuel pumping in. But I do want to clean everything up. I want to order a new grill. I have a cool new grill that I'm thinking about. I want to sand, buff, and clear coat the headlights. Uh, I want to fix all the paint chips. I want to plastic weld all the broken plastic pieces. That one might be completely shot. We might have to make something up. Uh, this has a little bit of salvage left. So I just want to fix all these little things, get some of the body filler and fill up some of the cracks. This is basically going to be my daily that I'm going to continue practicing some techniques on. I showed you how bad the door was. I do think I want to try to body fill that and clean it up. We'll see if I go that crazy, but I think I would. I think I would like to try some of that stuff and just get used to doing it, especially on a car that's I'm not afraid to do it on. It's got 150,000 miles. It's a 2.0. I'm going to get it going with extra money. The interior is pretty shot. It really is. Everything is disgusting in this car. All of it. So there is plenty of content to be made out of this car. And I know once I do, I am going to be one proud SOB with how I turn this thing into my daily. It just definitely needs work. It is no shortcut. Even this handle. I think you guys saw in the video, I got to replace this, possibly the whole thing. I might be able to just get this piece, uh, but these buttons are busted. So we'll see. I know I need to get this locking cover. So it just needs a lot of little things to get to where I want it. But I really cannot wait to make this thing my daily. I miss just having a nice little car that's not stick shift that I can just rip in. Plus, to be honest, the Mustang 
just feels horrible to drive in. It makes me slouch to the right. I'm always kind of shifting because the shifter is way up in the front to the right. For as long as I am and how far back I am, I always end up leaning to the right. It screws up my whole back. So driving this thing home, it felt so good. I bought it to flip it. That was the original point and why I tried to get it so low. But on the ride home, it felt so nice that I thought, I'm going to keep this thing. It's so cheap. It's going to be mine. It's going to take so much work. I probably won't make that much on it. So I might as well keep it and make it a fun activity. So that's it, guys. I think that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Uh, if I don't have a, another flip by next episode, then we will be cleaning and starting to work on this thing. So with that said, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. And I will catch you again on Sunday. Later, guys.